So welcome back again to continuation of our vector error correction model. You can see that step one, two, three have been done and dusted, and there is no need for us to proceed to step four because from the outcome of the Johansson cointegration test, which you can see right here, you can see right here that there is cointegration. So we are going to skip step four. So we proceed now to step five which is now to perform the vector error correction model. To do that, we go to quick, we click on estimate var, and we list the variables. LNPDI is a variable of interest. I list that first. So now I'm going to check the vector error correction button. Now for the lag intervals, remember I said, when you are specifying your vacuum, you are going to lose a lag because a vacuum is the same thing as a var enforced difference. So when you difference your var, you get a vacuum, and by that you lose one lag. So I'm going to change two here to one. Every other thing looks fine, but before we proceed, we need to click on this box, the cointegration, and we have one cointegrating equation. You can still see it here from the result from the trace test, and also the max again. So in this box, you have to put the number of cointegrating equations. So even if you have two cointegrating equations, make it simple, just put one here. So I'm leaving this as one. I have no VEC restrictions, so I click OK. So here we have our results for the vector error correction. To also simplify analysis, I have copied all these results to a PowerPoint slide which I'm going to show you right now. So here on the screen is what I copied from eViews and annotations to make explanations easier. As a follow-up to the first uh, video we did on specifications on vector error correction model, I mentioned the ECM term. So you can see this column here explains the breakdown of the error correction term. And the equation for the EC term is what you can see here. Y here is a um, variable of interest, and XR are other endogenous variables. So they represent the cointegrating equation and the long run model. So if I'm going to lay it out the way EVUS has done, I'm simply going to plug in the variables and their coefficients the way they are here. So for YC minus 1, I simply put in 1.00 which is what is here now. Same thing for the XT minus 1, that represents PCE, and you can see it here, 3.63, a negative sign comes here, and RT minus 1 represents GDP, it has a positive sign and is right here. Lastly, we have the intercept, which is a constant, it comes with a negative sign, and you can see it plugged in here. So I've simply um, followed EVU's arrangements of the way the variables are listed in the ECT um, equation. So this is the cointegrating equation. It is the error correction term equation, signifying long-run relationship among the variables. So below here, these are the short-run coefficients, and we have the error correction term here, and this is the adjustment coefficient. Remember uh, in the video which I made on how you can specify the vector error correction model, the change in white in here represents PDI in this model, which is this. And the coefficient of the dependent variable, the lag of it, is this, negative 144. You can see that here in this model. This is it. The change in XT is PCE, which is a positive, which has a positive coefficient. And RT here represents GDP, which comes with a negative coefficient and is here. The constant has a positive sign, and we have it here. Don't forget, the adjustment coefficient is this, and we have it here. In interpreting this, you can say something like, the previous period's deviation from long-run equilibrium is corrected in the current period at an adjustment speed of 6.7%. Let me take that again. You can interpret this as, the previous year's deviation from long-run equilibrium is corrected at a speed of 6.7%.
So that is how you interpret the adjustment coefficient. For PCE, you can say something like a percentage change in PCE is associated with a 0.44% increase in PDI on average ceteris paribus in the short run. For the GDP coefficient, you can say a percentage change in GDP is associated with a 0.09% decrease in PDI on average ceteris paribus in the short run. So these are ceteris paribus effects. There is nothing more to it. So make sure you get your estimation right when you are computing your vector error correction model. You must do it with a P minus 1 lags. So now let's move on to the final step, step 6. Let's perform some diagnostic to see how seriously our results can be taken. So we go to view. We start with the residual test. We start with autocorrelation test. We use two lags all through, so we leave this at two. We click OK. So this is a good result. The prop values are higher than the 5% level, so there is no serial correlation in this model. Next up, let's go to view. Residual test. Let's test for normality. The cholesterol of covariance is checked, so we leave it that way. We click OK. OK, so this is a residual test. On the upper part here, you have the results for skewness. The next, you have the result for ketosis. And lastly, we have the result for Jacobera. So we are mostly interested in the Jacobera test, okay? Because the Jacobera always factors in both the skewness and the ketosis in its computation. And we have three components. Each component represents the variable in the system. So component one is for PDI. We can say here that the residuals are normally distributed. For the second component, PCE, the residuals are not normally distributed. For the third variable, which is GDP, the residuals are normally distributed. And overall, for the entire model, the residuals are not normally distributed. This is not a good news. We may have to go back and check what we've done. But individually, two of the series residuals are distributed normally okay let's do a couple more tests we go to view residual test now let us test for heteroscedasticity so we can see here joint test the probability value is 11.35 so this is a relief so at least this model is not heteroscedastic thank god so that is how far we can go with estimating vector recorrection model and the diagnostics and how you can interpret your results Again, to wrap up, target variable must be placed first. Always decide on your maximum lag length using the appropriate information criterion. If you arbitrarily choose your lag length, if there are too many, you may lose degrees of freedom. Your coefficients may turn out to be statistically not significant, and you may end up having multicollinearity in your model. And if you use too few lags, you may suffer from specification errors. So, help yourself always use the appropriate lags from the information criterion. Go ahead to perform Johansson test. Whatever the outcome of the test is will tell you, am I going to do a VECM or just the basic VAR? And if you are going to run a VECM, always remember to reduce your lags by one. Interpretation is very simple. Simply interpret the coefficient as having ceteris paribus effects. And lastly, always perform some level of diagnostics. If you need to read up on the references, I have this textbook shown on my screen. Please go through them, download several articles to see how they perform the VECM in their respective papers. It's been good having you around. Stick with me. Don't go away. My channel is dedicated to you and for you alone. Tell others about my channel, share my links, share my videos, subscribe if you have not done so. I'll be right back. Please don't go away.